you've got to be ready to happily discard what you worked so hard on and move on to the next thing. My name's Charlie Clouser. I used to play keyboards in a band called Nine Inch Nails, and now I compose the scores for horror movies like the Saw horror movie franchise, Resident Evil Extinction, things like that. I'm here at Afters because I have a long relationship with Martin Armager, who's the subject leader for sound and music, and also with some of the graduates like Prue Monton and a couple other folks who have uh, come out of the program here. Here's my three mildly philosophical top tips for not just musicians or composers, but anybody with a creative career in mind. Develop a, a style of communication that works outside of your little creative world. When you're studying in school, you're a lot of times going to be surrounded by educators and fellow students. You'll have a common vocabulary and common technical jargon. I wind up needing to talk with directors or producers about the music I'm composing for a film, not in terms of major chords and minor chords and use this harmony and don't use the fifth, use the third. I've never had those type of conversations with the people I need to interface with. We always wind up talking in more abstract terms, like when you're trying to describe what it is you do for a living to your dad when you go home for Christmas break or something. Steer your car intentionally into the weeds. And by that I mean, I don't want to be watching a set of taillights of my competition as they get further and further away and I continually try to catch up to them. I'll on purpose kind of creatively orient myself and my approach a little bit to one side. So if there's a particular style of music that a whole bunch of people are just absolutely killing it with and they've just got it figured out and they're just nailing it, I won't try to decode or emulate what they're doing as much as I'll try to maybe extract a couple of aspects that I like from what their work is doing, but then really just grab the wheel and swerve my car off into the ditch. And that might mean that I wind up driving my creative car at two miles an hour over a bumpy, muddy trail through the woods, hacking my way through the bushes. On a good day, it might mean that I'll eventually come out onto a cliff with a view of a beautiful valley and I'll be the first person, maybe the only person to ever see that view. My third top tip for anybody involved in music or other creative fields is to not be afraid to throw things away. Inevitably, over the course of a long creative career, you'll have a lot of pieces that you create that for one reason or another won't be what the client or the director will want. Um, or for whatever reason, they may not even be able to explain it to you and they, all you may get is, eh, I'm not feeling it, try something else. Even though that piece, that creative work might be something that you sweated blood to do and it might contain everything that you've learned through your entire life and career up to that point and you need to be prepared for that moment when the reaction from the director or the client is along the lines of nah, I'm not I'm not really into that one what else do you got that kind of moment is going to happen repeatedly the, the ideal reaction you can have to, to that moment is to go yeah done it's now deleted I'll have something better for you tomorrow in the uh, Immortal words of Mike D from the Beastie Boys in the song Shake Your Rump, he says, I've got more rhymes than Jamaica got mangoes. So to me, that always meant you've got to be ready to have more rhymes than Jamaica has mangoes. And you've got to be ready to happily discard what you worked so hard on and move on to the next thing. If any of this made any sense, subscribe to the Afters YouTube channel.